Dear friends, dear colleagues, we are reporting on the outcomes from the World Workshop on Periodontology, addressing the new classification on periodontal and peri-implant diseases. This presentation will bring three areas in front, namely peri-implant health, peri-implant mucositis, and peri-implantitis. And these areas were covered by the work group four of the workshop, where I had the honor to serve as a chair, together with Professor Gary Armitage from the University of California, San Francisco. We have been working together with 25 experts from all over the world, and the work done by the group has resulted in a consensus report entitled Peri-Implant Diseases and Conditions. So this will be the core of my message in the presentation here. The consensus report is based on a huge work by the reviewers, resulting in a five expert position papers addressing peri-implant health, peri-implant mucositis and peri-implantitis, which were all prepared in due time prior to the meeting. The case definition paper became finalized during the meeting and the etiology of hard and soft tissue deficiencies will not be discussed in detail in this presentation but describes the different kind of deficiencies we address and observe prior to and after implant placement. Now, before going into the details of peri-implant health, peri-implant mucositis and peri-implantitis, I would like to bring forward something important related to the term definition. The term definition has often provoked misunderstanding. There is a clear need to distinguish between disease definition and a case definition. The disease definitions are descriptive. They present the characteristics of the disease, whereas a case definition should provide the clinical guidelines or diagnosis. In other words, that is how to assess a condition. In addition, when you look at the diagnostic features, the most important part of case definitions being presented here today are the findings on bleeding on probing and bone loss that we assess in radiographs. Now, bleeding on probing is the tool by which we can distinguish between healthy and diseased tissues while bone loss should be used to distinguish between peri-implant mucositis and peri-implantitis. Bone loss should be understood as not to exceed possible crestal bone level changes that result from initial bone remodeling after implant placement.